Hello, I'm William Gallagher. This is Apple Insider, and this is for you if you've just got yourself a new iPhone. That iPhone is going to be the most useful device you can ever carry about, but not until you've set it up. And you know, going from the box to setting up, having a fully set up iPhone, it's not like it's hard but it is surprisingly involved. And there are so many steps. If you've ever had an iPhone before, or really pretty much any Apple device, Apple itself tries to help you skip as many of those steps as it can. But the steps are important. They matter. So here's what you do once you've opened that box and turned on your new iPhone. Right away, you're asked uh, to set the language and region, so find those on your list and select them. I think the former is the most important, really, and most urgent, because Apple's going to use that now. I'm going to use it to show you all of the other steps as you go through this in the right language for you. But I suppose getting the region well also sets the clock and things. Um, here, though, once you've done those two things, here's the first point where Apple uh, thinks it can help you skip over a few things. If you are moving from an older iPhone, or if you have an iPad, actually, you can use quick start. Just putting these two devices next to each other physically and on the same Wi-Fi network, that's enough to start up the quick start process. And when this starts up, this process copies over all of your information from one device to the other. I mean the, the Wi-Fi password, your contacts list, it can bring over your apps. It is a tremendous, tremendous thing. But it's no use to you at all if this is your very first iPhone. And actually also sometimes, even if you've had several iPhones, you do want to start from scratch. So tap set up manually. Next, the iPhone, it, well, it's going to need an internet connection to do this job. So pick your Wi-Fi network, enter the password, tap join. While that's happening, you let me say that, yeah, this is an iPhone. It's got a cellular connection that you can use the internet over, and yet it's asking you about Wi-Fi. Cellular, it requires a SIM card that you insert in the side, it requires a carrier plan, and both of those you can set up at any time. Whatever you do, whatever order you do it in, as you go through this setup, at this point you're always going to be prompted to use Wi-Fi, so that's what we're covering here. Now having done that, got on your Wi-Fi network, we're off. You're into the first of a series of questions that Apple needs you to answer and security features you need to set up, like being able to unlock the phone with your face. Next, a passcode. Even if you use Face ID to unlock your phone, and surely you will, because it's great, sometimes, quite often, you will be required to enter the passcode anyway. Uh, the most obvious example is if you ever switch your phone off and on again, you will definitely be asked for the passcode. And now, for another way that Apple wants to help you skip a few steps, wants to make this easier, here are backups. If you have an older iPhone and if you've backed it up, you can now use that backup to set up your new iPhone. If you haven't got an old backup or if you want to start fresh, you can instead tap that don't transfer button and so set up everything yourself from scratch. And actually, this doesn't add an awful lot of time and effort to the basic setting up of the iPhone. Uh, it really just means uh, you're going to make a couple of choices along the way, choose different preferences that you'll see in a minute. And also you're going to have to download each of your apps individually. That's probably the long part of it. But you might well want to download apps individually anyway. Maybe you've had an iPhone for a long time, you want to clear out the apps you don't use, or maybe you're moving to an iPhone with less storage than you had before. Next, decisions. Do you want your iPhone to use location services so that maps and find my own and other apps can work. yes you do basically yes just say yes there is a privacy issue here i suppose so it's, of course it's got to be your choice entirely but your iphone knowing where you are is an enormous boon to countless apps that you're going to rely on not least the weather next slightly less important apple pay apple pushes its own apple pay at you during iphone setup but go on let it Apple Pay on your iPhone, it is genuinely useful. And if you choose to set it up here, all you do is you tap this button, you let your iPhone take a photograph of your debit card or credit card, it does some checking with your bank, see your you, and then it's done. But you can do that later, and actually I think you will as you add more and more cards to it. Similarly, Siri, if you want to now, you can set up Siri to the voice and the language you want, but 
it's already going to default to one of the voices done for whichever language and region you're in, so this isn't necessary either. This though is also where you set up the hey iris thing, the ability for the iPhone to listen out for those words or similar. You can set that up now or you can set it up later as you want. It's the same as well with screen time. This is Apple's feature for telling you how long you spent using your device. And I suppose this is this has a genuine use, uh, maybe particularly if you're a parent setting up limits on your child's iPhone usage, but otherwise you can skip it. And now here's the first of two important, you can't skip this, privacy decisions you need to make. And again, because they're privacy, they are entirely up to you. Both of them, they're similar because they're about what information is automatically sent as you use your iPhone. And in this first case, it's data that's automatically sent to help Apple. Then on the next screen, it's data that helps app developers. This is the kind of thing that helps developers and Apple fix bugs. So sharing is a good thing. An infinitely harder decision, gosh, so hard though, is the next one, dark or light mode. If somehow you don't have strong feelings, leave it as it is, pick one at random, and just know you can easily try them both out later. And actually, I do mean both. You can swap one or the other, or you can have it move between the two. Yeah. That doesn't feel like the most essential setup decision you've got to make, and there are a lot of steps we've gone through. I think that's one Apple could lose. But fortunately, it's also sort of the last step. If you've chosen to restore from a backup, well, you get this progress bar for quite a long time. It took ages to tell me even what the estimated time was, uh, and it was wrong. It said, I think it was something like 17 minutes in my case, and then it only took about nine. It totally depends on your device and how much data is being transferred. Whatever it is, however long it takes, you can walk away during this part too. Let the iPhone screen go blank. When it's done, when you come back, that iPhone is, in theory, restored with the backups, and it's definitely ready to use. In practice, it's pretty much ready, but not quite. If you have restored from an old phone, it's quite fun actually, you'll see your old apps popping up one by one as it completes downloading and setting them up for you. And if you haven't, you're probably gonna spend a lot of time now in the App Store, picking out apps. But that's fun, and it's something you can take your time over too. Your new iPhone, it's now set up, and it is ready to be the single most useful device any of us can ever carry.